Muy buenos días, un saludo al Good morning, Miguel, greetings to missionary Miguel Bermudez Marín mm -hmm. and to all the ministers, hermanos, brothers and sisters who are gathered there Kapurco, with him in Acapulco, Guerrero, Mexico in the congregation which the Reverend Abraham Liberto Pastas and all the ministers and brothers and sisters who are gathered through the internet or through other means of communication today, Saturday, 30th of July this year, 2022 it is truly for me a great privilege that the Lord grants me to send this short greeting from here from Puerto Rico to all my brethren in all Latin America and also in Europe, in Africa, in all the places where they are also gathered in fellowship, in fellowship around the Word of God. It tells us in the Second of Kings, chapter 2, verse 1, and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven with a whirlwind that Elijah went and Elisha, with Elisha from Gilgal. Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha. They came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Elijah said unto him, Elisha tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yeah. I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elisha said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they two went on. And he writes, Revelation 11, 1 to 14. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they two stood by Jordan. And remember, uh, uh, and they two stood by Jordan. And remember that Jordan represents death. And at this time, it represents the great tribulation. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters and they were divided hither and thither so that they too went over on a dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what shall I do for thee before I be taken away from thee? And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on, and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a wheeling a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his clothes, of his own clothes, and rent them into two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah and fell, that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan, and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and smote the water, and said, Why is the Lord, the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of prophets that were view at Jericho saw him, and they said, The spirit of Elijah doeth rest on Elisha. And they came to him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. 
the topic that we shall be reading today or the one upon which we shall have this sharing is entitled Moses and Elijah, the gathering and the harvest taken from the writings that we have read uh, that we will read to you later on in the message Deep Sea Fishing from the message The Vision of the Gotten Cathedral Volume 1 on page 222 it says Deep Fishing preached on 7th November in 2000 in Chile and since the Reverend William Branham already departed what he saw in the vision of the tent was not fulfilled the time in which he lived then all that corresponds to our time to the age of the cornerstone where after Christ finishes the seven stages or ages of the church he calls and gathers his elect of the last day and puts them in the age of the cornerstone which is the age of the most holy place of his spiritual temple all this corresponds to the third stage, the third pool in the message, the messenger to Israel, let's stop there for a moment and let's read from this other message. This message preached on 1st of February 2013, Colombia, the messenger to Israel. It says, therefore, all the promises pertaining to the last day for the church will be carried out in the golden age of the church, no longer in the past age, nor in the first, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh. He passed through those, stage, those ages and did, and did the work pertaining to each age, through the message of each age. For our time, the promise is that God will send his angels with a great voice of trumpet, and they will gather his erect. There is no other place where he can send them but to the age that is in force, the golden age of the church of the Lord. And the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Son of Man, was partially manifested through the Reverend William Branham. That stage has already passed. It was the stage that for a reign, everything that God will, will, will be doing in our time. Just as Christ was reflected in the prophets from Adam and on, both his first and second coming, Christ has been reflected both in both his first and second coming, from Adam to the Reverend William Branham. For this end time, he's going to fulfill what corresponds to our time. Some people may think that the Reverend William Branham has to be resurrected to fulfill what he was told that he was going to do. And that is natural that in our time to it happened. If it happened in the time of the Reverend William Branham, that there were people who who are thinking that he had to come in his body again to fulfill everything that he prophesied or he foretold, thinking and focusing everything in Brother Branham that is the one to is the one to fulfill them, to fulfill everything that was spoken. And in our time, there are some who will be thinking like that. It is that he says this, it is that here he says that, it is that here he says that it is the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ who fulfills that, the one who does this, the other, this, that. It is parallel in everything. Everything that happened and was reflected in the Reverend William Branham and also the attitude, and also everything that the people of that age would be doing would be reflected in this time. Although the part of that exodus, of that exit, to ascend to the age of the cornerstone was fulfilled in those eight who were taken out of, the, of that age and were put in the age of the cornerstone, they would fulfill and would be put in the age of the cornerstone, which is the age where the Lord has sent us at this time, his age of messenger, William Soto Santiago. And they would be hearing and receiving everything that God would be making known to us through his angel. And there would be a people left who would still be thinking about the return of Brother Branham. Yes, 
he will return but it would already be in the time of the resurrection where everyone will be here with us and if in the seventh age of the in the time of the ages in the seventh age of Laodicea if that happened if that occurred then in our age the age of the cornerstone which is fulfilled in the seventh dispensation uh, where there are consecutive ages the same thing would be happening there are gods elect who would already be uh, that would already be going to the eighth part the eighth stage and there are others who would remain in the seventh age waiting for him to return and fulfill what is yet to be fulfilled because by the Branham at that time he left and apparently did not fulfill everything that he prophesied or everything that he said that was going to be fulfilled in our, in our time the same would happen people would be thinking that still he will return to fulfill everything that he prophesied what our beloved brother William Santiago prophesied and that is normal it is natural for that to happen so we cannot argue with those people who are thinking that way what did he tell us uh, that for instance we pray for the group of brother Branham's brethren that we treat them well that we look for their uh, we treat them with affection with love because there will come a point when they are going to see it so also in our time we will pray for all those who are not yet been who have not been able to see everything that God is doing in our time we love them and we wish blessings for them too and here he continues to say some people may think that the Reverend William Branham has to be resurrected to fulfill what he was told that he would do this is the case there is a part in the message in this, in this same book of the vision of the Great Cathedral volume 1 on page 252 in the message the minister of the archangels Michael and Gabriel preached on 5th of January 2003 and he moved him to another higher dimension and then later on he showed him certain things and then he took him up higher in a higher dimension to put him in a great tent in a, great tent, in a service therefore it was not his tent nor was it his service that he was carrying out it wasn't his activity he went to a place where an activity was being carried out and then there was a tent set up and if activities were being carried out well it was not the first occasion they were already having activities being carried out and that corresponds to the third pole and that stage was not fulfilled in the time of the Reverend William Branham he is seeing beforehand what is going to happen later on when he will not be on earth in the body of flesh that he had you see so it will be under the ministry of another person who will be anointed with the Holy Spirit another person that the pure of fire will be with and then he will be speaking he will be using him and Christ will be working and thousands of people will be coming to Christ and later on he will pray for the sick when that time comes you see, there's a time for everything. Uh, he continues to say in this message, the messenger to Israel, where I was reading to this is a case like of the prophet Elijah the Tishbite whom God told there on Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb to go down it was with the voice of that still small voice that he told him to go and anoint Hazazel the king of Assyria Notice, uh, notice how it was with a still small voice then Jehu king of Israel and Elisha prophet in his stead Elijah came down from the mountain and as he was on his way he passed by the farm where Elisha lived the, there he stopped through his mantle over Elisha and Elisha says to him wait wait I first go and, and, and say goodbye to my family and I will follow you and he says to him, what have I done to you? Then later on, when God wanted to take Elijah, Elisha already knew it. He had a good training 
uh, which we don't know how long it took for the ministry that God had put in him. If he was going to be a prophet in the place of Elijah, who was the best person through whom he could learn, well, with the prophet Elijah. And now we find that when Elijah had lived, he had not anointed Hazael as a king of Syria. He had not anointed Jehu as king of Israel. Either Elisha, Elisha was the only one with him for a few days. We do not know how long, and visiting the groups of the sons of the prophets. In other words, he rated him well. He introduced to him well, he prepared the way for him. That was the, the most important person for him to prepare. And we thank God that God at this time is not a person that the people do not know, but he has been in the midst of the people visiting all those places with the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ William through Santiago and he has been with him and has been in that relationship with the people in other words he is not a stranger to the people of God he is someone who has been well introduced to the people and that is very important to know then he had to go to a certain place because God told him go to such a place he says to Elisha stay here in other words stay here with the sons of the prophets and he would be fine but not better than being with Elijah not better than with his master the sons of the prophets said to Elisha do you know that today God will take Elijah your master out of your midst Elisha says to them yes I know keep quiet uh, they go to another place Elijah visits the sons of the prophets of that other place they go to receive him and there they also receive Elisha God says to Elijah go to Jordan Elijah tells Elisha to remain there the sons of the prophets return the 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 sons of the prophets come again. Let's repeat this part here. And they go to another place. Elijah visits the sons of the prophets. Of that other place, they go to receive him and also to receive Elisha. And God says to Elijah, go to Jordan. Elijah tells Elisha to remain there. The sons of the prophets return once again. Those in that other place. They also knew that Elijah was leaving that day, that he was going that day. They said to Elisha, do you know that today God will take away your Lord from your midst? Elisha says to them, yes, I know, so be quiet. Elijah says to him, God sent me to Jordan, remain here. It's like saying to him, stay here, you can rest, you will eat well, you will take it easy, you will be well taken care of. But Elijah was not after being well. What he wanted was to be next to Elijah, following Elijah. That is what he had been born for, to be Elijah's successor. And when they were on their way, on their way Elijah says to him, no, I will not leave you. Wherever you go, I will go. I will not leave you. Speaking like Ruth, the, the Moabite woman. Do, do not beg me to leave you. I will not leave you. Wherever you go, I will go. Your people shall be my people. Your God will be my God. And where, where you die, there I shall die also. And on that, on one occasion, uh, it happened in the house, I was still in the house before I went to the hospital. In one of these day, one of the days I, I went there, he said to me, Benji, help me. And I didn't understand when he said that to me, Benji, help me. And I would say, but how do I help you? And that always sometimes when I went, as we recorded some greeting, I would 
put the tape recorder to record in case he had to say to tell me something and that well I had recorded it I have it recorded he only looked at me when I spoke to him but the audio is here then if we see it, if we see it fit to play it you can hear how I was talking to him and how I was desperate do something for him do something more for him and I told him there what I remember so I told him uh, later we, we will check the audio I, I said to him how can I help you and I also told him other things there I also told him if I have to give my life for you I give it and other things are there in that audio and one one understands now all those things that the Lord was putting in one in, 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 in one's heart to express and it was the hand of God guiding in everything because it was already the moment or in a short time God was going to take the messenger it goes on to say Elisha was not going to leave Elijah there are things that have not been spoken openly and as we go as we draw more closer to that stage all those things will be will be opened as the people will be more mature and and receptive to continue receiving from the Lord everything that God has to continue giving us for this time of preparation but remember that it will be in a very simple way in a way in which many will stumble but the elect the wise ones will understand they will be watching they will be anxious they will be looking at the act watching uh, looking at the word which is the one with which God will be guiding his church in, like he did in all the past ages and dispensations and also in our time it is always with the word it is always the word it is the end of the covenant the pillar of fire it is always uh, with the pillar of fire that he guides the people the pillar of fire is always the guide of the people Elisha was not going to leave Elijah and remember that Elijah also typifies Christ and, and, and Elisha represents the church of the Lord Jesus Christ the church is not going to leave Elijah and now when it is Elijah's turn to go over Jordan he says to him ask what you want ask what you want me to do uh, let's check here Miguel the passage of Jordan to see the part uh, before crossing Jordan around chapter 18 or 19 in the first Kings second uh, Kings 2 9 and remember that that was before closing Jordan that God took Elijah and he continues saying the rapture of Elijah notice was a, in, and in a, a divine program and Elisha had to see Elijah being raptured for a double portion to come upon him now we find Elisha attentive to everything that Elijah did and said and where Elijah went there also went uh, there also went Elisha uh, Bien, quizás el audio no estaba bien cuando estaban transcribiendo. Ah, uh, the audio was not clear when they were translating or transcribing. También Eliseo, o sea, parece que para donde iba Elías también iba Eliseo. Ah, uh, es importante ya que era que Elías iba a ser raptado. It is important since it was that Elijah was going to be raptured and it also tells us that for this time there will be a rapture chariots of fire, chariots of horses, chariots of fire will carry the church bride of the Lord Jesus Christ now there is something very important which I think we are already 
en un tiempo en el time to talk about que no había leído, to talk about it to tell you something dice, that en la página 141 I had not read citas, on page 28 of the book of párrafo the quotations dice, el otro día, arriba en la montaña, the other day up on the mountain I was standing dice, there I said Lord I go to an open door in the whole nation as far as I know that's Phoenix of Phoenix, Arizona, you are the only one I got and I started down off the mountain just as the plain as I ever had anybody speak said, what's that, uh, what's that, what's that to thee, follow thou me, and brother William there writes, he says Phoenix, and he writes, is an open door for the sixth Elijah, In other words, he is revealing something that we read recently in a message that Brother Miguel had put on a Saturday. Then on Sunday we, we played it. And we read that part where Brother William talks about the double ministry of the fifth Elijah. That would be on earth. In other words, uh, when we put that together with this, when we put this together with the other one, there you get a clear picture of what God would be doing and fulfilling at this time. You notice how he writes there. It is an open door for the sixth Elijah. And if he says so, I believe it. It goes on to say, now the ministry of Elijah for the fifth time is linked to the Hebrew people. That is the ministry that I read to you from the from the message where it says that it is a double portion, a double ministry. And the ministry of Moses again, because those are the ministries of the angels of the Son of Man, sent to call and gather 144,000 Hebrews. That is according to Revelation 7 and chapter 14 and Matthew 24, verse 31. And in the book of quotations, in the message, the, the, the seed of discrepancy, on page 5, paragraph 19, in the English book it says, notice in verse 41, Matthew 13, the two also very close, so close in the last days, still he didn't do. He could not depend on some certain church to separate them say the Methodist or the Baptist or the Pentecostals to separate them. He said he sends his angels to separate them. An angel is coming to bring the separation, the segregation between the right and the wrong. No one can do that but the angel of the Lord. He is the one that is going to tell which is right and which is wrong. God said he will send his angels at the last time. Not angels down through here, but angels at the last time. And they would gather together. We know that this is coming, this is the coming harvest time now. Now an angel is actually interpreted a messenger, and we see that there is, uh, there is seven angels of the seven churches, and now, no, through the church edges. And there he writes, harvest. And then he writes, in the separation he will send his angels. And he also writes, Moses and Elijah, the gathering and the harvest, is the topic that we have, that we gave this sharing. And in the paragraph, as he was speaking, for example, when he said, he will send his angels to separate them. And then down he draws a, a, a little pyramid, then further down, when he, when he says he is the only one who is going to say which one is right and which one is wrong, he draws another pyramid next to it. Then further down there he says, not angels down there, but angels in the last time, and he would, and he would gather them together, he draws another pyramid. And then up he writes, and then he also writes harvest right next to it, or mowing, something like that. Uh, he, he writes harvest and also in the message 
Israel en su patria. Israel in his homeland. Página 14. Dice. Page 13 in the English book says. <laughs> dice. Como nosotros tuvimos la otra like noche, we had the night, al venir el ángel, the death angel de grana roja coming through, is there a red streak este on your venga. door before this great shaking dijo, comes? He said, más, no solo not once tierra, more will I shake the earth, but I will shake the heavens no and will receive a power Eso of a kingdom febrero. that cannot be shaken. Es Hebrew, Estamos that's right. We are living Ahora in that hour. Now watch, I see Joshua, the young leader, God meets him, he said, don't get scared now, you, my servant Moses is dead, but rise and go over this Jordan, no man all the days of your life will be able to stand before you, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you, fear not, be strong and very courageous, my, I can see that, that old warrior walking around there, little humble Pharaoh, he was in, he had called all of Israel up together, and looked over Jordan there, and it was in the month of Avis, April, and then the snow had melted in Judea, and there was a great river coming down through the roaring, and he writes next to it, uh, Joshua, YH, WH, and below he writes, time of the harvest, and then he writes, Jordan, and on page 15, in this same message, says, then you will be as Joshua, he looked sitting back over there on the hill, and there was the Ark of the Covenant, the go between, he had something that would go between him and their troubles, and tonight, and, and he had something that would go between him and their, and their troubles. And tonight we have got the ark, Christ Jesus, who stands between us and death. And he writes the, uh, the ark of the covenant, Jesus. Some of these days, when the last breath is leaving our body, I want to run down to the river and say, Give way, Jordan. I am going over to see my Lord. I believe in the morning, I, I, I believe the morning star will come out down through the valleys of the shadow of death, light up where and the Holy Ghost will stretch two grossy wings across the, the Jordan. And those two wings are Moses and Elijah. And pay our weary souls to a better land. Amen. Now notice this. Then when Joshua looked, he, he, he took the Ark of the Covenant, told them, say, gather yourselves out there, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and get ready, for you will see the glory of God. Then he knows God was with him. Then he took the priests, and they put God first, the Ark of the priests, before the congregation made them step back a certain distance until the Ark went first. Brother and sister, if you will put God first, in everything you do, you are bound to come out right. Put God first. And then he writes, God first. And they went packing the ark. And when the priests, the priests feet rested in the water, God rolled back the Jordan. She moved back. He stood in a pillar. Él permaneció en un pilar de fuego and e Israel cruzó Israel sobre crossed la tierra seca over on a dry land su campamento. built their, Josué built their camp Joshua was walking around tarde, solo a, couple, a, lugar. a couple of days later allí porque Dios había just looking over the place everything Entonces, was closed de up there because their God had Jericho, put fear on them all of the Palestine drillers up around Jericho. Joshua was walking along, and he looked, he seen somebody, and he writes, Angel, he puts his sword, he said, and this other man pulled his sword, 
meaning the angel he said who are who are you for are you for us or you are for our enemies he said nay but I I am the captain of the host of the Lord take off the shoes upon your feet for the ground you stand on is holy is holy ground he made Jesus there face to face the captain of the host of the Lord and he told him what to do to march around the walls sound a trumpet let out a shout and the walls of Jericho would fall or that <coughs> that experience that Joshua had there was also something that happened in those days and especially that day there that night in the hospital and that remains spoken and remains also as a testimony to be established in history which each one of us is making because each one of us is making your own history and the history which will let alone be told in the millennium and in eternity all this will be recorded everything that happened how it happened and what happened like here we are reading all those experiences and in this case the experience of Joshua and we also see and read the experience for instance of Manoah and his wife the experience of Moses with a bush see all that is recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Remember that the book of Acts does not have an Amen. In other words, it is all this time, all ages and all this time, it is going to be the continuation of the book of Acts. And they took the land of Palestine, settled down in there as God promised them, because the promise of God was for them. We continue reading here. The Reverend William Branham says that the Reverend William Branham says that that what the seventh seal is for the church is the seventh trumpet for Israel, which is Moses and Elijah. They are the ones who sound the trumpet to call and gather the 144,000 Hebrews. It comes with the great voice of trumpet to call Israel. And since that which is the seventh trumpet is is for the Jews and the sixth seal for the Jews. It is also the seventh seal for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If it is the same, those who have the seventh seal without knowing it, they will have the sixth seal with them and they will have the seventh trumpet also. But first it is in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and then later it will go and then, and then later will come the blessing for Israel. Israel is waiting for Elijah. Elijah will come for the fifth time. And on page 33 of the message, who do you say this is? Now see, the ones that did know him and believed him, they would have known what to get to wait at. See, they know which away he was coming. There's a great expectation. But you know, there wasn't too many saw him. See? Not everyone is going to see him. And that, we have to be aware of that reality. See? There is many, there is many didn't see him. So it is today. See? That is the way it is in every time. Not everybody is going to see him. And up there he writes, the eastern gate today and is coming. And next to it he draws a picture of a pyramid. But then saying, therefore Israel is in expectation. You have already seen enough things happening and it will continue to happen until the whole divine program is completed. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ has to be ready and obtain the resurrection of the dead, believers in Christ and the transformation of the living, in order to come out of this earthly dimension. Therefore, the first thing is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and then the Hebrew people. 
the angel of Revelation 10 is the messenger to Israel, is the angel of the covenant, is Christ, the same one who gave them the law on Mount Sinai, but he comes for his church in his coming for the transformation of the living and the resurrection of the departed believers, for which he has to give them the faith to be transformed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb, which is promised to be in the fulfillment of the vision of the tent, where the third pole, that third part of the third pole. See? And remember that writing that we had read from the messenger where he wrote the three things of the third pole. Because the third pool has three parts. Two were already fulfilled in the Reverend William Branham. But the Reverend William Branham says, but there is one in the book of in the book of Seals, page 549 in the book of English, and says, and in Sabino Canyon he said that is the third pool. In other words, the sword is the word. In other words, uh, it is the work or what is done with the word. The sword of the king, the sword of God, the sword of Christ, the king of heavens and the earth, which is his word being put in the hand, in the mouth of a man, and his speaking and things happening, that is the creative word. And Brother Branham continues saying, and there is three great things that goes with it. And one unfolded today or yesterday, the other one unfolded today, and there is one thing that I cannot interpret because it is in a known, in a known language. Therefore, Brother William says, therefore the other two previous ones here in English, the third part of the third pole is in another language. In the first two parts of the third pole of that third pole, they were speaking the creative word in what language? In English. The first and the second stage or pole. But now in the last of the third pole it is in a known language. And Brother Branham says, one unfolded today and yesterday, the other one unfolded today, and there is one thing that I cannot interpret because it is in a known language. Because it is an, in a known language. But I stand right here and look right straight at it, and this is the third pole coming up, and the Holy Spirit of God, oh my, that is the Holy Spirit carrying out that work, carrying out that third pole, which is coming. And Brother William Connor saying that was the reason all heaven was silent. Brother, Brother Branham, and then that, Brother William says it is linked to what caused the silence in heaven for half an hour. Now, Revelation 8, verse 1, when the seventh seal was opened, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour for the mystery of the seventh seal to be known, which was opened in heaven. It has to that third part of the third pole to be speaking in that unknown language. Language, speaking, revealing that mystery, revealing the seven thunders, that will be the seven thunders speaking, the voice of Christ, the mighty angel, the Holy Spirit, speaking in the midst of his church and making known all these things that correspond to that third part of the third pool. And that happens within the half hour of Cyrus. That's what is happening now in plain words. And the third pole will be in that part of the third pole will be in the great cathedral. You cannot separate it from the vision of the tent that was shown to the Reverend William Branham. Therefore, the seventh seal and the seventh trumpet will be the same, says the Reverend William Branham. The same thing that is the seventh seal for the church is the seventh trumpet for Israel. And therefore, the same thing that is the seventh seal for the church is the sixth seal for Israel. Therefore, the question is, when is that third pole going to be fulfilled in all its fullness? William Branham says, it will be in a certain place in a written cathedral. If he said it, being the forerunner of the seventh seal, being the forerunner of the second, of the coming of the Son of Man, of the coming of the Lord with his angels, with Moses and Elijah, then we pray that soon the vision of the tent will become a reality, where we have the promise that there will be a great manifestation from God. On page 549, I had read to you that the Reverend William Branham was taken higher to 
a higher dimension. And there I saw a great cathedral and all the things which were happening there. And he says there, and there is one thing that I cannot interpret because it is in a known language. And he says that it is in the Holy, it is the Holy Spirit of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit, he must be speaking in another language. He knows all languages. He will be on the last day speaking as he spoke in every age. He spoke in different languages. Why? Because he spoke in the language of the messenger of each age. And if the seventh seal is the third pole, the third pole and the third part of the third pole, if it is in another language, then if it is in another language, someone has to be speaking in another language. And it will be the Holy Spirit through another language that will be speaking, that the instrument will be speaking for that work. There it is simpler to understand. And I think it is simpler or more clear, as they say here in Puerto Rico, it doesn't get any clearer than this. Well, it has been for me a great blessing to be with you on this occasion, testifying to you of all these things which are promised to come to pass. The messenger to Israel, Christ the angel of the covenant, the Holy Spirit, which or, who always uses instruments, men, and the language of the, of the man he is using will be the language through which the Holy Spirit will be speaking all the corresponding things, all the things corresponding to the work that will be doing through that man. And we continue about to finish uh, in the extract that we began with, in the vision of the Gutenberg Cathedral Volume 1. Uh, it continues saying where we had stopped and then for the calling of the elect of the Hebrew people the vision of the tent where great wonders great signs and miracles will be will be taking place corresponds to the time when the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ will be adopted and through the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ Christ will be carrying out the miraculous catch of the elect of the Hebrew people who are 144,000 Hebrews 12,000 from each tribe. That third pole will have blessings for the bride church of the Lord Jesus Christ, also for the foolish virgins who had no oil in their lamps, and also for the 144,000 Hebrews, and also uh, in that manifestation of the third pole, the whole world will see. They will see the great wonders, the great signs, the prodigies, the, the miracles being performed. And that will shake the entire world. But for the world, it will be for a testimony. There will no longer be an opportunity for salvation for the world. The door of mercy will be closed. And that is what is also on page 8, 9, 10, and 11, which you can write down there. And then you can study it later in the same book of the Vision of the Gutenberg Cathedral, Volume 1, where our brother William tells us that we have to see everything from the different points in order to see the whole picture. We cannot see it from only one angle because there we, we would not understand it. We have to see it in different angles in order to have the complete picture of what God would be carrying out. And thus, are able, we are able to see the fulfillment of everything that was spoken by the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ, William of Santiago, which will be fulfilled. Everything that he spoke will be fulfilled to the letter. Nothing will fail. Everything will be hit. Everything will hit the mark. So it's been for me a great privilege to be with you to send you this short greeting to all of you. In this sharing, Moses and Elijah, the gathering and the harvest. May God continue blessing you greatly. And may He continue to open the scriptures and understanding to understand this third part of the third pole which is being fulfilled in such a simple manner that can be overlooked by, by those who do not watch for the fulfillment of that promise. 
will be very but bueno, very simple que Dios les bendiga, Dios les guarde, well may God Mano bless Miguel, you may God keep you thank you so much brother Miguel for this opportunity and we will be praying for tomorrow's activity for God to pour out his blessings upon each and every one of us may God bless you and may God keep you all